Hi, mamas. It's Isabel here, your mother's empowerment coach. And I am in beautiful Montana, big sky country, on vacation with my family. We celebrated my birthday a couple days ago. And I am so excited to have Brittany join us today for our Wise Woman Wednesday. Let's coming on now. Hi, Brittany. Let's see. She's coming. The technology seems to be working today. Yay. So Brittany is owner and lead coach in her coaching company, Be Radical. Hi, Brittany. Hi. Good to see you. Thanks for being here with us you today. Too. Absolutely. Thanks for being in Montana and getting some I summer know, love in. Right? <laughs> A little change from city life. Amazing. Yeah, it's wonderful. So oh, yeah. I'm really grateful to have you here as we talk about mindset when it comes to how we as women can find some more ease when life feels really stressful. So I have yeah, been absolutely. personally coached by Brittany myself, and I know that she has <laughs> a wealth of wisdom to share with us. And uh, so Brittany, will you just introduce yourself? So the women can hear a little bit about you. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, ladies. So I'm Brittany Cotton. I live in San Francisco. I'm originally an Oregon girl. So I'm loving the fact that Isabel's in Montana right now. Um, I have been in the coaching world for two years. In 2016, I started a company called Be Radical, which to me was all about getting outside of the checklist lifestyle. Let's stop doing do this, do this, do this that society says and everybody thinks we should do and actually create lives of fulfillment, joy, adventure, love, abundance. Um, and I've been on this track for two years and absolutely loving it. I work primarily with women. I'm completely sourced every day and I just am... I have just so much kinetic energy about what's going on right now. I love being a part of this culture and supporting women in um, really creating thought patterns and language in their heads that serves them and that's conducive to the future that they want. Yay. Yes, exactly. I love it. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Well, let's just dive in. What, what um, tools and techniques do you use for finding that ease? Yeah, so I actually had three tools that I wanted to share, and they all can be done separately, and I, all, I think that they also work really well together. And the first thing that I think is really important when creating ease and relaxation is getting really clear on what's so. So we all know that we go out into the world and we're frustrated or angry and there's a lot going on or sad or having a big day or our kids are yelling and, you know, chaos. But we actually input a lot of interpretation into what's going on. Um, versus just being really, really clear on the facts. So the first thing that I like to support women and my clients in doing is, what's so? Sit down, get really clear. First, what are the facts and what are the interpretations? And what we'll notice about doing this is that the list of our interpretations are about a mile long and the list of facts are about this long. And so once we actually get really clear on how much of our uh, energy and how much of our experience of that day or that situation is actually in our heads, it really helps to be like, okay, I actually have a choice here. I can get stuck with all these interpretations that I'm making, or I can relax knowing that this list of what's actually so isn't that big mm. and I can actually breathe a little bit. So that's the first tool that I love. Um, factor interpretation. You can do that at the store. You can do it when you're picking your kids up for school. You can do it anywhere and get really just clear on how much of this am I making up and how much of it is actually what so? The next so thing is we go on, what am I experiencing? Can we just dive a little into yeah. that one? Because mm -hmm. I love this. I love yeah. this tool. And I mm -hmm. think it can be really helpful in parenting, especially when um, we feel judged by other parents. Say, so let's just go through a scenario. So say um, say we're at the, yeah. say I am at the park with my child my three-year-old, and he begins to have a, a full-blown tantrum. And all those thoughts are going through my head, like, the other moms are judging me. I am a bad mom because I don't know how to handle this. Something's wrong with him. 
So all the mile long thing is happening instantly. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's amazing how much we can contain the mile long in like this much time, you know? And so, so what would I, what would you suggest I do um, internally and maybe even externally in that moment using this tool? Yeah. So two things, and this works if you can write it down and if you can't. So let's pretend with that scenario that you're sitting down on the park bench and you actually can't write it down. So what I would do is just take a deep breath and be really conscious. Okay, for the next however long, I'm just going to say all the interpretations. Only the things that are inside my head, just get really clear on those, either say them out loud, whisper them to yourself, or just go through them. Um, then take a breath. And then... To yourself say all the actual facts which are sitting on a park bench my three-year-old is screaming there's other women at the park there are other kids at the park the sky is blue okay mm. so just like really give yourself the chance to notice like what's actually happening right yeah because chances are the fact isn't going to be that you know like we don't we can't we're not mind readers right yeah. so the judgments are all interpretation yeah Awesome. Thank you for going there. Yeah. 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 And then if you are writing down or you have a place to do this, sometimes I I mix mine. So it can be, I'm just writing down everything and then I'll go back and say, that's an interpretation. Mm. That's an interpretation. That's a fact. That's an interpretation. So you can play with it, but just make sure that you're really clear on what a fact is. A fact is what a third partial, a third party impartial person would say that's totally objective. So, right, it can't be anything head-based. So I love that. Yeah, and I, I just love this because it gives me a moment to be like, wow, all this other stuff is made up. This is what's so. How do I want to spend my day? Do I want to opt in to this stuff that doesn't make me feel good, that's limiting beliefs, or just be really present to, I'm at the park, my kid's screaming. And also, um, the limiting beliefs, while the interpretations of them aren't fact, the the fact that you are ha- experiencing them is fact. So maybe that can even be on the fact list, not the interpretation, but the fact that they're happening. Like, Correct. oh, I am yes. experiencing I'm, I'm exactly. a limiting belief. Yeah. Exactly. I love yeah. that. And what a great option to give yourself a chance to sit back and see and distinguish it as such. Yeah. So mamas, I just want to invite you to let us know in the comments, like, where could you possibly use this tool? And if you are courageous enough, maybe list for us some of your limiting beliefs around a situation because often it help, it's helpful for us to know that we're not alone in our, you know, our uh, limiting beliefs. And that can help us sometimes shed them when we see, oh, I know that this is just a belief in her. And so if I'm experiencing it in myself, then it's also just a limiting belief in me. And it's easier for us to be objective about somebody else. So I, this is a place, this is a safe place um, to just show up, show up really raw and let us, um, let us see one another. That's, um, that's a way that we can really support one another as well. Awesome. Yeah. And I, and what I would add to that is, so cool when everyone can come forward and have a safe space and really be seen because what we'll notice is a lot of the interpretations a lot of us have the same ones and it's totally normal and it feels really good when you see that everybody else is doing that thing too and then we can create some kind of lightness and energy to be like oh my gosh why are we all you know why are we doing this yes um so i love the idea of writing it down and really like being a community inside of this factor interpretation conversation it's great powerful okay what's our next juicy yeah. tool so the next juicy tool is after what's so um you might get really clear on what you're experiencing so like i said these don't need to go together but i'm going to speak about them as if they do so say you created the interpretation and the facts um and there's a lot of feelings there right there's a lot of energy around the experience of the uh interpretations so i like pe- um I like my clients to get really clear on what am I experiencing? Is it anger? Is it sadness? Is there frustration? Um, And I do this because the thing is, before we go into relaxation mode, if we don't actually get clear on what we want to be relaxing about, it kind of can get a little wonky because it's suddenly like, okay, I need to relax. I need to be easeful. But if I think if we don't distinguish first what that 
thing is that we want to get some deep breaths on and move forward from, it's a little bit harder to create a clean surface to do so. So the second tool is what am I experiencing and what's the healthy way to express it? And what I know is that this often is usually an anger or sadness. Yeah. So it's great to have healthy ways of expressing these things. So this might be that you're in the park or you're at home or whatever it is, but I actually invite clients to make a list beforehand of uh, healthy ways to express anger, healthy ways to express sadness. So when you're feeling it, you can express it and then go into the thing that makes you relaxed or comfortable. Yes. I love this. So can we dive into yeah. an example of this one as well? Just something yes, absolutely. real life. Um, mm -hmm. let me think of something. Um, so let's say, let's say we are, um, angry at our partners, you know, we're angry that, um, let me, let me do something that was real for me. So I remember being really angry that my husband's life went back to normal after we both became parents pretty quickly mm -hmm. when while mine completely transformed. So there was also sadness there. There was anger and sadness um, and also a lot of resentment. And I, I know that I'm not alone in this specific situation that I'm speaking of. So how might someone um, use this tool in that situation? Yeah, um, this is what I imagine, sitting down and just and this is what it, it's always sitting down and just getting really clear on our bodies and ourselves yeah. for a second, right? And really distinguishing the feeling. Am I angry? Am I sad? Am I sad that I'm angry or angry that I'm mm. sad, right? But actually just choosing something that we know we are feeling, even if there's a multitude of things, just get really clear. What's the thing I'm really noticing right yes. now? Say it's frustration. Okay, frustration. So I know that there are things to do when we're frustrated. And who do we learn this from best? Our kids. Yeah. What do our kids do when they're frustrated? They scream, they tear something, they run around. So give yourself one minute, five minutes, 15 minutes, and figure out the things that actually express that feeling for you. Scream into a pillow, scream in the shower, write down all the things that you're mm -hmm. mad about your partner for, tear it up, but actually do something that is physically aligned with that feeling so you can release that energy so you're not carrying it around all day. Yes. That would be like a great example of that. I love this. And I also love that um, with the like the pre planning of what we do when we're experiencing emotion, it's within that planning is a validation of the emotion. Because I know I grew Absolutely. up um, with the, you know, again, the limiting belief that anger is something that is not welcome um, at the dinner table, and that I was sent to my room, you know, I was if I wanted to be mm -hmm. angry, I could do it in a timeout. Um, and it was not welcome. And so I, I love that we're reteaching ourselves what we can actually do. That's actually a healthy thing to do when we are experiencing these emotions. It's like a reparenting. Absolutely. Almost. Totally. And what I also love about it is, you know, when there's a lot going on and um, we're like, okay, I know I'm fear experiencing frustration, but uh, like, what do I do? What's, what do I choose? What I love about immediately go to them and be like, oh, boop, okay, I'm going to do that one right now. Don't even have to think about it, but I know it's going to support me in expressing this feeling. Yes. I love it. Okay. Wonderful. Oh, I see. We've got yeah. some hearts here. So <laughs> we're not the only ones who loves this tool. Yay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. What's next? Um, so yeah, so this actually goes perfectly with a third one, which is what I call um, core care. I'm not talking about abs. <laughs> I'm talking about our essence, our essential nature, our being, our spirit. So the, what this practice is, is before we're frustrated or before we're feeling like we need to release some anxiety or get relaxed, is creating a core care list. So these are all the things that we know we can do to get back to being, to get back to our essential nature. Create this list beforehand, create it some night when you're feeling really good or right before bed, when you're already relaxed and think about what are the things I know to do that make me present to my greatness, that make me present to who I am at my soul and my spirit. And then same thing we just talked about, 
when something's going awry or you have a lot of energy or there's some chaos, you already know where that list is and you go to it and you can create something from it and you don't have to think, what do I do? It's like, oh, these are the things I know to do. These are my options. Pick one. Um, oh, this is so amazing. I love this one so much um, because for me, I, um, I experience um, – like anxiety and sadness around my premenstrual time. And mm -hmm. I, and that, but I, in that moment, I forget that I have these tools. I forget what to do. And totally. so I love this idea of writing it down so that it's something physical that you can then go to look at. Um, and that uh, it also reminds me that this is a, this is a special time that is useful. It's not just a time to wish away, but it's a place that's super, um, I'm more intuitive than I, than I normally am. And I, and, but I forget that. I just remember all the, like the negatives of that time. Right. So when, that, when we write it exactly. down, so I, it's a, it's a, it's a tool that we can actually like pick up. Absolutely. And then you could take a picture of it. So you have it on your phone. So if you're out and about and something's happening, you can, you know, uh, reference it. But what I love about having it visible is everything that you just said. It's a reminder, one, that you have an option to create something different. And it's also a reminder that you've been out of this place before. Yes. This is just a stopover. It's not the desk, you know, this is just the tiny plane that you're on, the little plane of frustration that you're currently in. It's not the destination, but we know what the destination can be because we've created it before. We have that power. So it's a reminder of who we are at our core and what's available to us when we forget. It's like our wise self com comes up to meet our, like maybe our yeah. toddler <laughs> self or, yeah. Exactly. Our inner mean girl. Yeah. Right. And what I love about the, the, the core care is that you can use it as from all the ones that I've already explained today, because it's first, let's get clear of the factor interpretation. Then let's get a little, uh, you know, release some energy about what we're feeling. And now we can go into real route relaxation and essence mode by having this core care list. I love it so much. Awesome. Brittany, is there anything else you want to share with us today? Yeah, I have two things actually. I want to share that a lot of this is inside of my ebook that I have on my website. So I'm going to put in a comment here to just send the link. It's free. Um, this it kind of goes over some of the steps and a few more extra ones. And then I also um, I'm so okay. So one of my best friends just had a baby yesterday. And one of my, uh, the women that I work with just came back from maternity leave. So I'm feeling so much mommy mm -hmm. energy. And so I, I opened up 10 spots in my practice for a free hour session for anybody who's in this group watches this later watches it now whatever yes. it is. There's 10 slots whoever contacts me first or writes that they want one of those. Um, I'm opening them up and I just want to be in support of women who are nurturers caretakers lovers and passionate about the world and you know, are doing something together. So awesome. Yeah. That's why, don't what you, I want to why don't you tell us more about what it would, what it would uh, look like to be one of those 10 people? Yeah. So what it would look like is we'd get on a quick phone call before the hour, like a different day. So we could set it up, get to know each other a little bit. And then that hour is specifically spent on whatever you want to dig into. Is it a feeling you've been having? Is some, some insight you need? Is it a struggle, a gap, whatever it is, it can be work, relationship, kids, creativity, innovation, whatever you want, but it's a one hour for you and I to spend totally digging into your thought pattern around it and getting really, really clear on what's the lens or narrative you're sitting inside of this. Like, how are you interacting with the world through this that's catching you and not letting you go through? Um, Beautiful. Isabel, we've done one of these yes. before, so I don't know if any, you can speak to your experience of that. Yes, I know that I just from one hour speaking with Brittany, I had some really um, empowering shifts that happened. So I just highly encourage you to gift yourself this. Um, and Brittany is so um, she just goes right to the core. And I just I'm so happy that um, I get to introduce you to these mommies who are just, I know, really ripe for the kinds of shifts that you can help implement. So thank you so much. And also, um, I'm really excited to look at your ebook as well. So I encourage you all to take a look at that too. And Brittany, where else can we find you? 
So my website is beradicalcoaching.com. I'll put it on a comment list. Okay. Um, that's where I am. That's where you'll find me. And let's get a little bit radical together. Let's get radical. That's right. Exactly. Let's get radical. Okay, Brittany, <laughs> thanks so much for being here. And I will talk to you later. All right. Okay, bye. Thanks, bye. Well.